Hello, and welcome back. My name is Diane Larson Freeman, and I'm a teacher educator at the School for International Training. This is the second tape in a two-tape video series brought to you through the courtesy of the USIA. On this tape, you will see demonstrations of three language teaching methods, Suggestopedia, the Silent Way, and the Communicative Approach. The instructors, all experienced language teachers and teacher educators from SIT, have designed their lessons for intermediate level ESL students. They have chosen the theme of a house. The lessons you will see are somewhat shorter than the originals. They are meant only to introduce you to these methods. All of the methods have a richer repertoire of principles and techniques than can be fully portrayed here. If you're interested in learning more, other typical like lessons can be found in my book, Techniques and Principles in Language Teaching, published by Oxford University Press. As you view the tape, try to remain open to what you see. For example, don't dismiss something because you are observing an English as a Second Language class with students from a number of different countries, and you teach in an English as a Foreign Language situation where the students are more homogeneous. Ask yourself instead, is there anything valuable here which I can adapt to my own circumstances? Suggestopedia, the first lesson you will see on this videotape, has been developed by Georgi Lazanov. Lazanov believes that we set up psychological barriers to learning. We fear that we will be unable to perform, that we will be limited in our ability to learn, or that we will fail. One result is that we do not use the full mental powers that we have. In order to make better use of our mental reserves, the limitations we think we have need to be de-suggested. Suggestopedia the application of the study of suggestion to pedagogy has been developed to help students believe that they can be successful and thus to help them overcome the barriers to learning. Watch how direct and indirect suggestions are made in the lesson. Suggestopedia will be demonstrated by my colleague, Lisa Sparrow. Okay, good morning. This morning, good morning. morning. This morning we're going to work with a reading passage. What I'd like to do is, that ask, is to ask that you get ready by relaxing a little bit. Just sit back. I'm going to put on some different music. And then I'm going to read. I'm going to read something, and I'm going to act it out for you. And then I'm going to turn the music off, and I'm going to read it again, but this time without acting it out. And at that point, I'd like you just to listen and to see how much you remember and you understand. Okay? So that's how we'll begin. You can just be taking a deep breath, being grateful. It's such a nice, beautiful morning today. You'll like this music. It reminds me of the early morning. Nice. You can kind of pretend you're back home in your apartment and it's Saturday morning and you didn't have to go anywhere. That's the story of this woman. <clears throat> So this is my bed, and my name is Sarah, and I'm about to start reading the passage. So, Sarah woke up early, the sun pouring through the apartment window. She stretched lazily and placed her feet one by one on the floor. Rising from the bed, she tiptoed through the boxes, which lay everywhere, and put a kettle of water on to boil. Waiting, she glanced over all her possessions, grateful she had the whole day before her. She scooped instant coffee into a cup and poured in the now boiling water. Stirring the coffee, she tried to decide where to begin.
she took a quick sip of coffee and searched out her box of books. She ordered them neatly on a shelf. Then she lifted her suitcase onto her bed. She unlatched the clasps and opened it. And hung her dresses carefully in the closet. Then she put the rest of her clothes in her chest of drawers. In the last box, she found the dishes her mother had given her. She washed them thoroughly. dried them all and laid them carefully in the cupboard. As she closed the cupboard door, she sighed and looked at the calendar. Tomorrow, her roommate would come, but for now, Sarah had a home of her own. Okay, now I'm going to ask that you just listen. I'm going to put on a different kind of music and I'm going to read this at normal speed. And I'd like you to just um, listen to it and see if you can kind of bring the images back of what it was that I did and see how much you can understand just as I go back through it. see how easy English is going to be as you hear it back played again. <laughs> yes. Sarah woke up early, the sun pouring through the apartment window. She stretched lazily and placed her feet one by one on the floor. Rising from the bed, she tiptoed through the boxes which lay everywhere and put a kettle of water on to boil. Waiting, she glanced over all her possessions, grateful she had a whole day before her. She scooped instant coffee into a cup and poured in the now boiling water. Stirring the coffee, she tried to decide where to begin. She washed them thoughtfully dried them all, and laid them carefully in the cupboard. As she closed the cupboard door, she sighed and looked at the calendar. Tomorrow, her roommate would come, but for now, Sarah had a home of her own. Okay, what I'd like to do now is give you each a copy of this. If you could pass them to each other. And then stand up. We're going to read it together and see if we can act it through. First, let's see if we can help ourselves remember all of this vocabulary, all these verbs. All right, let's try and act it out together. And the idea here is that every time you say something, if you can do an action, that will help you remember more of the vocabulary. So, again, so we'll wait. So we'll start and we'll read together and act as much as you can. If you need a little space, maybe you want to move over just a little bit so you don't poke other people. Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. Sarah woke up early. Right. The sun pouring through the apartment window. The sun pouring through the apartment window. She stretched lazily. 
stretched lazily and keep reading with me and placed her feet one by one on the floor good she tried to decide where to begin <laughs> she took a quick sip of coffee and searched out her box of books she ordered them neatly on the shelf. Then she lifted her suitcase onto the bed. She unlatched the clasps, opened it, and hung her dresses carefully in the closet. Great. Then she put the rest of her clothes in the chest of doors. Okay, very good. Okay, sit down. Yeah, good. Okay, you're very smart. Have you noticed? Yes. Okay, this is easy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is easy. Piece of cake. Right. Okay, let's work a little bit on this uh, pronunciation here. Here are some of the verbs we have, and as you see, I have them coded in colors. Let's see if you can hear what the difference is in the pronunciation. Can you read this one? Tiptoed. Stretched. What's the difference there? Tiptoed. Stretched. This is a D, and this is a T. A very interesting aspect of English uh, pronunciation in the past tense. Let's try these and see if this is true. Let's read. Tiptoed, ordered, opened, closed, poured, tried, dried, sighed, stretched, placed, glanced, scooped. Do you hear it? Stirched. Unlatched, washed, looked. Great. If you could take out the envelope that you have on your chair now, I have a surprise for you. Okay. You'll see that one, the pink card, has a D on it, right? And the blue has a T. What I'd like you to do is to get so that you have one in each hand. Probably the easiest if everybody had the same one. So if you had your T in your left hand, and your D in your right hand. Okay? I'm going to stand in front of this. Now, I'm going to say one of these verbs, and I'd like you to listen carefully and see if you think it ends in a D or a T. All right? Okay, just by listening as best you can. All right. Stretched. Should have the blue. Yeah, the blue. Stretched. It's good. It's listening. Okay. Listen. Okay. Placed. Blue. Glanced. Blue. <laughs> Jello. <laughs> you're, you're relaxing too much. We need to be relaxed and alert. Okay. Relaxed and alert. All right. Opened. Hey. Good. Okay. That should be pink. Okay. Closed. Anna, <laughs> Anna plays it safe. She puts two cards up. Right. Okay. Tried. <laughs> One at a time. Tried. Okay. Okay. Can't look. Okay. Unlatched. Washed. Good. Anna, one hand. <laughs> She's sitting there like this with two hands. All right. Unlatched. Unlatched. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, you're getting pretty good, so I think we'll stop there. That you can practice that a little bit later. All right. If I could ask you um, now to free your hands. You don't have to put things on the floor, but you're going to need your hands. See if we can do a little practice with the verbs that are irregular. These were all nice and easy because they had an ed on the end. But see if we can work with some of the verbs that aren't. I'm going to throw you the present tense of the verb, and it just, just for your security's sake, we have them here, wake, woke, lie, lay, put, put, all right. I'll say the present, and I'll throw the ball to you, and if you can say the past, okay? Ready? Okay, put, good, lie, 
in line. <laughs> <laughs> That's always safe. It gives you more time. Lay. Take. Look. Have. Bow. Have. Have. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Have. Did it hurt? You're okay. She's tough. Okay. Have. Have. Good. Um, wake. Look. Take. Look. Good. All right, everybody. Great. Thanks. Okay. Now, if you could take some time to go over these uh, with a partner, the green sheets. This will give you a chance to practice your pronunciation and to see if you can remember some of the words. So if you could work in twos. Um, two, four, six, eight. Ten, yeah, I think you are, there are even. You might have to, there are 24? Okay, so there should theoretically be partner for everybody. All right, what I'd like to do is have you practice one person reading through and the other person act it out. Okay, just a little bit. All right? Okay, so one person read and the other person act out. You want to read. Okay, Kofi is reading, so then you have to act. Just turn to each other, just in your seat. You don't have to move too much. Just for practice reading. Maybe we'll have time. Sarah once woke up early. So you turn, okay. The sun going through the apartment window. I think there's an extra person, so maybe three people. Can you read and they too act? Okay. I hope you've had a chance to go through it at least once. We now need a volunteer to be Sarah, and we, the class, will read, and one person can come up and see if they can go through the activity. Shokri. Beautiful Sarah. Here she comes. All right, come. Okay, we need the beautiful music, too. Mm -hmm. All right, so Sarah can go to bed. And all of us will do the work. We'll read. Okay. <laughs> he looks very comfortable. Okay, ready? Sarah woke up early. The sun pouring through the apartment window. She stretched lazily and placed her feet one by one on the floor. Rising from the bed, she tiptoed through the boxes which lay everywhere and put a kettle of water on to boil. Waiting, she glanced over all her possessions Glance over all you said. She had a whole day before her. As she closed the cupboard door, she sighed and looked at the calendar. Tomorrow her roommate would come, but for now, Sarah had a home of her own. Bravo. Very well done. He was a very beautiful Sarah, don't you think? <laughs> All right. Now, just to see how much uh, we can work with this and to give you a little bit homework for the next class, I'd like to ask that you turn your paper over. I'm going to give you a, a short dictation of some of the words. Is this very difficult? Piece of cake, right? Piece of cake. Relax. Okay. All right. Again, I'm going to read you a few sentences. They're not the same as from the story. They're the same words, but they're different sentences. All right? Got that? The same words, familiar words from this reading, but different sentences, okay? The first one, Sarah looked over the dishes her mother had sent her. Sarah looked over the dishes her mother had sent her. Okay. 
she glanced at the dresses which hung in her closet and quickly put them in her suitcase and quickly put them in her suitcase. Okay then, your homework for tomorrow, you have two quick and easy things to do. One would be to check the dictation against the proper spelling on the other side, and then bring that to class tomorrow with any questions you have. And second, if, before you go to bed tonight, if you could just take a minute and take out this piece of paper and read it through for yourself trying to remember as best you can some of the pronunciation and the intonation of, that we've worked with today. Okay? So see you tomorrow. Okay. All right, bye. The first thing you may have noticed in the demonstration is the atmosphere the teachers sought to create with the music, the posters, and the plants. This is done because learning is facilitated in a pleasant, comfortable environment. The teacher also speaks in a reassuring tone of voice, suggesting implicitly that learning the target language will be relaxing and enjoyable. The more confident the students feel, the better they will learn. With the words she uses, she also seeks to activate the learner's imagination, which will also aid their learning. A major step in the learning is the concert phase, during which the teacher acts out the reading with a musical accompaniment. This step is in keeping with Lazanoff's observation that communication takes place on two planes, on the one, the linguistic message, the narrative here, is encoded. And on the other, are factors which complement the ling linguistic message, for example, the teacher's actions and the music. When there's a unity between the two planes, learning is enhanced. A pseudo-passive state, such as the state one experiences when listening to a concert, is ideal for overcoming psychological barriers and for taking advantage of learning potential. The material the students are learning needs to be activated as well, however. The means of doing this should be varied so as to avoid as much repetition as possible. Dramatization is one way of doing this and a particularly valuable way of playfully activating the material. Fantasy reduces barriers to learning. Other means of activating the material used by the teacher were the game with the ball and the dictation. The game helped to create a playful atmosphere thus indirectly suggesting that learning can be fun.